Okay, hello everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Rahmi or Amy, if um, if you've talked to me before. So um, yeah, uh, I'm going to be sharing about the online course that we have been developing uh, because due to the pandemic, uh, we had to transition from the offline activities to the online activities. So um, before that, we never ever tried to organize any online activities before. So we attempted to come up with a solution for that, which is to build um, an online course. Um, the transition period was not very long. Uh, it was from March uh, 2020 to June, uh, where we had our uh, the trials for the courses and uh, the first few, I think, like batch of the online course. Um, yeah, so the online course is uh, mainly about the editing guidelines on Wikipedia. We have um, the materials, the reading materials. We also have the video tutorials for the online course. And it also uh, involves assign assignments. And there is also like the grading system for the online course. It is held for three weeks. And we usually open for 80 participants. Um, and also it consisted of three, three units, uh, the introduction and also the, the policy and the rules of Wikipedia and also the part where they are uh, asked to create uh, and to edit uh, articles. And usually we are helped by two active volunteers who are experienced uh, with Wikipedia to help uh, manage the participants and also answer their questions. And so far, we have organized 16 online course. Uh, I'm going to be uh, going th through this real quick. So um, we start by listing all the requirements that we need, the platform. We use Google Platform at first because we thought that it's the easier and the uh, most accessible one. Uh, and then also the certificates, certification requirements, what a participant needs to do to fulfill all the requirements and to get a certificate, the materials, the video tutorials that we had to create in such short period of time, and also the assignments, grading, and some live sessions that we organize to connect more with the participants. So yeah, um, Google Classroom is used because it's easy. Um, there is an interface uh, with Indonesian language, so uh, it's it makes participants uh, easier to access the course. And also there is a certification requirement, requirements. They have to fulfill the assignments. They have to join the course from the beginning to the end. Uh, they have to attend at least few uh, of the online sessions. And then they have to edit 20 articles, uh, at least on Wikipedia, and achieving 80% grade out of 100 uh, in the course. And the materials. Uh, the introduction to Wikimedia and the movement and, of course, inter introduction to Wikipedia, the interface, the five pillars, uh, user accounts, uh, talk pages, communication, profiles, and everything. And also the notability, references, uh, neutrality, plagiarism, and also the style of writing. Video tutorials, we also have the video tutorials to guide them, uh, and also the assignments for every topic in each unit that we will grade, um, and the grading system uh, that that is done by the uh, two of the volunteers that help us. And the live sessions to get engaged more with the participants and give them the opportunity to ask questions directly to us. Um, and this is the example of the course timeline. I'll go, I, I'll skip this, but it will be available on the presentation. Um, and the results, so, uh, so far, 821 people have joined the course and, uh, 378 or about 46% of people have passed the course. And there are 9,509 articles have been edited and, 95 people are still active, uh, which means that the uh, engagement rate is 25%, which is uh, way better than the offline activities that we have done. That uh, usually uh, when we have online uh, offline activities, uh, 20 people join, but none will, uh, you know, continue to to edit Wikipedia. So uh, we have, oh sorry, we have some follow-up activities to get them more engaged and to get them to stay. Uh, to do more uh, activities with Wikimedia Indonesia, um, like uh, just like small conference and also training of trainers for them. And uh, this is the distribution of the participants. 
So it's proven that, yeah, of course, online course can reach more contributors um, in different regions uh, in Indonesia. Um, and this is uh, some of the highlighted changes. Online course, our online course is more comprehensive, which we think is the main factor that make a lot of the participants uh, stay contributing to the Wikipedia because they do not only learn on how to edit, but also they learn about the, how the community works, how the platform really works behind the scene, what are the stories and the drama on the talk pages and everything, and that's what keep them uh, engaged. Uh, and sorry for the heavy slide, but this is uh, the highlighted feedbacks from the participants. Um, yeah, it's just a mixed reaction or like opinions for, for them. Uh, some of them think that the course was really fun, it's structured, uh, but some of them had difficulties in managing the time because it sets a very rigorous demands. It's very strict in order for them to be able to pass the course. And it was very demanding, but uh, yeah, some, some people thought that it helped them to go through long, boring holidays and uh, they were very happy with the certification and the souvenirs that we gave to them after passing the course. So uh, I'm inviting my partner, Dian, to talk about this part. Um, we're currently also developing a prototype of our online platform using Moodle, and Dian will be talking about this. Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, maybe you can visit it also by this QR code. Uh, we are in Indonesia, is currently uh, building this prototype. Uh, this is our first LMS prototype, and uh, it started because we faced uh, some registration issue with Google Classroom, because uh, and it makes our participants find it difficult to sign up with non-Gmail accounts. Uh, besides, we also have limited quota for each batch, just like Amy said before. We only have, uh, the course is only available for 80 participants in maximum. Uh, and sometimes people email us and say that, uh, I have registered for twice, but why you guys reject me again? And we were like, uh, that's not because of you, that's just us. In fact, we have limited uh, wiki trainer, so we have to limit the seat also for this course. And uh, yeah, this is what we love most about our prototype because it offers more option for enrollment. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it's available for manual enrollment and self enrollment because we want uh, we wanted to make some self-enrollment so that uh, people who want to learn about Wikimedia projects can also learn it by themselves. And uh, who is behind this prototype? Okay, so this prototype uh, we built in uh, with our technology team and one LMS consultant for around three months. Uh, it started in November till January, and it's uh, we for this developing phase. We only focus on the registration and content migration from Google Classroom to Moodle. We also realized that uh, for with the new platform, we have to adapt because we can we cannot make it just like Google Classroom, right? We uh, uh, we need to adapt. To the new platform. So here is some feature that uh, we have in our uh, prototype. Yeah, an index in the sidebar. Okay. Also available for discussion for the participants. And this is our uh, learning materials. It contains uh, video tutorials, just like Amy said. Uh, this is my. This is our old version of a video. We are currently uh, remaking the new, the newer 
video tutorial with that we have that we hope can more be engaging for uh, the participants this is the grading and the report uh, i will skip this yeah uh, this site is also available uh, in smartphone uh, we try to make it as easy and light as possible so that everyone can access it uh, this site and uh, we make it accessible for the smart smartphone because uh, since our Indonesian participants uh, still dominated by smartphones user from the young age to the elder so what's next uh, I hope uh, after this uh, we can we wanna uh, try to make lim to test limited uh, to, to have a limited uh, test for our communities and we hope uh, that we also plan to make the course available also for not only Wikipedia project but also in other Wikimedia projects projects so uh, our Wikidata team is also preparing for the materials uh, like uh, the education team preparing the video materials also uh, I hope uh, in the someday uh, I can say to the Indonesian like uh, no now uh, no one will reject you because uh, not even the organizers because now you can uh, register it by yourself and you can learn it by yourself I think it's oh oh yeah um, just uh, like uh, you see before it's uh, still a prototype we uh, it's still uh, it's not perfect yet it's still a long run for us to uh, to have a full uh, fully pages of fully package of LMS and we are running on that uh, we hope in the next year we uh, we can uh, prepare and develop the be better version of our LMS. I think that's it from me and Amy. Thank you. Can, okay. Can I have okay. the the passing? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna share with you this work in progress for MOOC for educators that we are developing in Brazil. And um, this year we started to build this massive online open course at Wikiversity that aims to present in a condensed and simplified way information educators need to start using Wikimedia projects with their students. Our main objective is to show them how Wikimedia projects can be valuable tools for, and space for the development of their university programs, especially at extension level, um, which I'll explain a little bit further. In this course, we want to gather all the information that is usually passed on our first meetings with educators who want to build extension and education programs involving Wikimedia projects. Since there is a huge demand of Wikimovimento Brazil's support and the demand that is meant to grow exponentially, and I will explain why later, we decided to build the course as a way to handle all the existing demand and to prepare for the one that is to come. The MOOC is not intended to replace existing material that is evident, especially about Wikipedia, nor to delve into specific advanced details of the Wikimedia project, but to give all the information and guidance professors and educators need to gain confidence to start building their own programs with the Wikimedia project. In this way, all the information that is usually scattered on pages of Wikimedia projects is being condensed into a single space on Wikiversity, into a single um, yeah, in, uh, in Portuguese and directed to the public in question. Wikimovimento Brasil continues to be a point of support for our, all educators, of course, but it can be uh, focused for higher quality and deeper support, since the basics are outlined and systematized in the MOOC. So which 
were our motivations. Accordingly to a research published this year by Liana, Shani, Philip, and João, Brazil have a highly unequal education environment and it's reflected at the Wikimedia Project's educational uses. Through the years, Wikimedia education progress has been run mainly in the wealthier regions of Brazil, particularly by highly committed professors at type tier universities. Also, they are centered in the southeast region, which is the, the wealthier one also. Brazilian professors also are overloaded with work and have to deal with precarious institutions that commonly doesn't have computer lab with internet for students to use. That is, they don't have enough time and support to dive in and learn about Wikimedia themselves uh, to enter this whole university on their own. Uh, so, why now? Since late October, we have the funding to hire an education scientific dissemination manager. Hi. <laughs> they can be focused on education partnerships. Also, in 2020, there was a change in the pattern of Brazilian programs to short-term programs with few students. There was also a peak with more educators getting engaged with Wikimedia projects and projects diversity. This scenario shows us that education programs with Wikimedia projects in Brazil fit perfectly and this could be a growing area. In Brazil, we have now an extension curricula curricularization. It's uh, uh, a free translation, which means that now um, this kind of voluntary activities, the extension activities, have become mandatory in the curriculum of undergraduate courses across the country. Lots of educators are seeking ways to implement their courses and Wikimedia projects can be an amazing solution. Some of them have already built some with them, with us, and some projects like that with us. But what is the university extension? They are courses that aim to expand the student's knowledge in specific areas, are complementary short-term training courses, address knowledge that is not commonly seen or studied in depth by undergraduates, function as instrument of social insertion, bringing the academy closer to adjacent communities and institutions. A profile of courses that are closely related to those developed with the Wikimedia project. So, uh, to meet an ex existing demand and prepare for the one to come, we decided to build this MOOC at Wikiversity. It is an asynchronous course without tutoring, with the possibility of being carried out at the time and desired order. We will provide off hours and synchronous scheduled thematic meetings with a Wiki Movement Brazil professionals and voluntary team to ask questions and seek for individual help. The MOOC is divided into six modules, one for introduction, one for educational programs, and one for each of the four projects covered, Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikiversity. We also built a strong advising and strategic committee. Yeah. We also built a strong advising and strategic committee with these seven amazing and dedicated Wikimedians to make sure we are going in the right direction. But mainly with the committee, we wanted to share their experience and learn from them. So, thank you so much. Um, and this is a screenshot of some of us at our first meeting. Uh, and this is our translator, Vitor, that made everyone understood. <laughs> At the committee meetings, we discussed about the MOOC's content. That could be fine, uh, what be the final tasks, the course name, about creating a contact channel, and scheduled meetings throughout the school year. We discussed about the kind of content that should be in video format, which format the videos should have, and how we could register and make visible all the extension courses, partnerships for the community to see. What we have so far, now that we have discussed it, every part of the MOOC content is being written, the interface is being programmed, the course visual identity is being developed. Next month, videos are going to be recorded and edited, and we expect that the MOOC is going to be ready for the second semester of 2023. This is how it looks like now. Um, we still haven't approved the visual identity, but I 
Oh, I still wanted to show you how it looks like now. It's a work in, in progress. And um, the colors and background should be changed, but as you can see, it's becoming something already. We already have decided all the, um, the layers that are going to have. And with this MOOC, we intend to help and convince more and more educators and professors to use the Wikimedia projects with their students. We know how fruitful this can be, but now we want more and more educators to also know it. And we want them to know how to do it. We expect that the MOOC can play this part and be a successful entry to the university uh, and to Wikimedia universe. This is all the six modules. And yeah, thank you. Do we have questions? So uh, thank you, thank you for this uh, lovely presentation. So my question is to Amy. So uh, you are talking about your uh, education programs or courses. So uh, I, sorry, I don't know how to say this politely, but uh, how this certificate add value to someone's academic or professional life? The a the certificate of your course. Sorry? How does your uh, certificate, certificate of your course, add values to someone's life, whether it's be academic or professional life? Yeah, um, thank you very much. But in Indonesia, certification is very popular and it's a very effective way to engage people, actually. And, um, well, the certificate itself, um, I don't know exactly, like, the the value in, like, academic field or if you want to apply for a job or something like that. But we offer certification uh, as an appreciation uh, because, yeah, as I said before, certification is uh, is apparently something that I think almost everyone in Indonesia is looking for when they apply for an activity. They almost always uh, ask whether the activity has a certificate or not. So um, it's just an appreciation for them to, you know, that they have like passed the course, but we don't know exactly. I mean, like it also depends on what kind of things that they would use the certificate to apply for. But um, yeah, I think I think um, yeah, it depends on that. But um, it's signed by the chair of Wikimedia Indonesia, so maybe like that means something in some uh, institutions when you apply there. But that's the reason why we put like certification is because. Uh, it is one of uh, you know one of the way that we can reach or engage people. Sometimes people just like uh, don't care like what certificate it is, but our certificate is a guarantee that it's uh, it's legal and it's um, you know like it's signed by the chair of Wikimedia Indonesia. It's not only certificate that's generated automatically with just like random uh, signature or whatever, but it's it's official from Wikimedia Indonesia uh, and it's just like as appreciation to them that they have passed the course and so far they have um, all the participants that have passed the course most of them have been really appreciative of the certificates and also uh, the souvenirs but I always um, said to them that it's not about the certificate it's not about the souvenirs but it's about something bigger that you're about to get into once you pass the course because then after that if you are you know actively engaged in the communities in Wikimedia Indonesia then you will get much more than just certificates and souvenir you'll get networking and uh, experience and a lot of them attended our national conference which uh, we're really happy about so yeah i think I, I hope that answered your question yeah thank you very much thank you Thank you for this presentation. I have two questions, and I know we don't have much time. So one question for Indonesia was, um, do you have any, so you re remarked that the, the retention rate of 
participants in the online course had a quite impressive retention rate. You said like 25%, and you said that was more than your the the uh, the off wiki, the kind of in person wiki lati courses. Do you have any hypotheses as to why uh, that retention rate was was bigger? And then I have another question for Brazil after this, but maybe quick. <laughs> Um, okay, I think it's because the online course is more comprehensive and it gives uh, more depth understanding to Wikipedia and also the community and how it works. And that's why um, for the span of like three weeks, they get to learn much more about what's behind the scenes. While the offline activities, it only lasts for four hours and we only uh, give them like the editing training. Okay, they can edit now, but they don't really have the knowledge of how the community works. And uh, the I think also during the three weeks, the, the, the amount of experience that they have, the familiarity towards Wikipedia is what makes them actively, uh, you know, uh, continue to get engaged in the activities after they pass the course. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, that's very helpful. Okay. Thank you. So Thank better you. learning outcomes, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. And my question for Brazil is we heard a little bit about in Indonesia that the, the evaluation, some, some, some sense of the evaluation that led to, you know, piloting on Google Classroom and then saying, oh, we're going to do Moodle. I'm curious what, uh, what uh, evaluation process you had that led you to choose Wikiversity as your platform. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is a course meant to professors to make them enter the Wikimedia University, the Wikimedia Universe, and then take Wikimedia projects to the university to their own courses. So our main objective here is not to build a capacitation like they are capacity and they have a certification of something, because in Brazil, um, prof university professors don't really care for that. Uh, and we were trying to think about that and with the committee, we, sh we arrived at, at a place that we decided that are going to be uh, final tasks on each model. And these tasks are going to be related to what we want them to do. So the final task, that is the final one uh, after all the six modules and that they have to complete them all to have the certification. Um, the final task will be to build a extension program to is that what we want them to do. So they are going to put in practice what we want them to do. So with that work that have, they have done in the course, they can go into the university and just apply that. So in each module and um, Wikipedia, Wikidata, they're going to practice something to use in the in the program. Uh, we haven't developed uh, the tasks yet, but we have the idea that they are going to be something like that. And about the certification, we are going to give a certification of ours because they can be at some universities uh, used by professors to move up in the career. But uh, not all, because in Brazil, each state has, has their own uh, rules about this stuff. And maybe each university has their own rules. So we are going to think about a certification that is um, more general and can attend a, a lot of more professors. But some will not use it for something. And uh, we know about that. And we are very sorry. But we will give the certification. Did I answer? Yeah, thank you okay. very much. Um, okay, I think we are. Uh, yeah, but uh, we are. I mean, the break is starting right now, so uh, maybe you can continue talking there. Uh, sorry, so we can just. Um, go move on to the break. So thank you all. Thank you for, pre for presenting your experience with uh, the uh, courses. It was really, um, it was really insightful. Uh, and now I invite you to join the breaks, to have some refreshment and to go back at 3.30. Uh, thank you.